<laughs> Hi, I'm Chris. Hi, I'm Tara. And welcome to Shakespeare's Test Kitchen, Episode 2. Pies, Part 1. Keep whoring, calling her a whore. I don't think that's true. I looked under her dress. Part 1, we're going to deal with the Lenten, or sweet, or... Meatless. Pie. And in Part 2... Meat. Savory pie which is often made with a hot water crust. Now, there is one pie that is the most famous in all of Shakespeare. It appears in Titus Andronicus. We are not going to make that pie. Go ahead and read up on the Titus Andronicus pie, because it's fun. But for now. But for now. We are going to talk about the Lenten pie. Specifically, the Warden pie. Ooh. Excited? <laughs> I'm so excited about Warden Pies. The Lenten pie is infamously mentioned in Romeo and Juliet by Mercutio. Ah, uh, Mercutio. All right. Juliet's nurse enters the scene and Mercutio sings a little song. An old hair whore and an old hair whore is a very good meat in Lent. But a hair that is whore is too much for a score when it whores ere it be spent. Since a Lenten pie shouldn't have any meat in it at all, uh, the joke here is that even old rabbit meat is, is really great during Lent. And even an old, moldy, syphilitic whore is acceptable if there is no fresh meat. Available. It's better than nothing. Let's let's go back to the derivation of what Lent is from the Old English Lenten, which means spring. Observers marked 40 weekdays from Ash Wednesday to Easter by observing a period of penitence and fasting, specifically fasting from meat. The adjective Lenten has become a synonym for meatless. Okay. So, there were several varieties of Lenten pie. Today we are going to be making the Warden pie as referenced in The Winter's Tale. The reference comes from the clown, this sweet, rustic character who's given the task of getting all of the ingredients. I must have saffron to color the Warden pies, mace, dates, none, that's out of my note, nutmegs, seven, um, a race or two of ginger, uh, but that I may beg, uh, four pounds, <laughs> four pounds of prunes, and as many of raisins of the sun. Warden pies are not only mentioned in Shakespeare's plays, but they're also mentioned in Inglesby Legends. It's by Richard Harris Barham. In this charming little excerpt. Who knows what I've got in my pot? Hot baked wardens, all hot, all hot. All hot. Like these wardens, our pie will be made with pears. Pears were first cultivated in Britain during the Roman occupation. Oh, this is so cool. Pear trees are mentioned as the boundary markers in the Doomsday Book. A record of taxable goods in England ordered by William the Conqueror in 1086. Pears were also part of the English troops' provisions during the Battle of Agincourt. <laughs> Many of the original varieties of pear gradually fell out of favor, but one that survived and is currently being revived is the Warden Pear. It is thought to have been cultivated by the monks of the Cistercian Abbey near the village of Old Warden around the 13th century. The first published recipe is thought to be from the good Hussif's Jewel in 1585. Woo! Here we go! Core it! did not work. So we went back to the text. We looked for a brand new recipe, one with more detailed instructions, and one that included all the ingredients that the clown mentions in A Winter's Tale. Here it is. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper and set it aside. Pour the boiling water over your saffron threads in a small bowl and let them bloom for 15 minutes and then add the ice cubes to cool it down. The name saffron actually uh, derives from the Arabic zafarun, meaning yellow. It comes from- Oh, it's the beautiful color. That's right. And uh, that's why it looks so good in the crust. It takes approximately 200 flowers to produce just one gram of dried saffron. Two cups of flour. One fourth cup sugar. Mm. Three fourths of a teaspoon of salt. This whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> three tablespoons of the saffron water. One, two, three. 
Now add the butter and cut it together until it resembles loose cornmeal. Bingo. Bingo. Then you're going to stir in your egg yolk. Keep stirring, adding one tablespoon of saffron water at a time until it just moistens the dough. Nice. You're going to gather the mixture together until you form a ball. Knead it gently. Shape it into a disc. Wrap it in saran wrap and stick it in the fridge for 30 minutes to three hours. What you're gonna do next is you're gonna take your four medium Anjou or Bartlett pears, peel them, core them, and slice them. Here we go. Peel. Look at how he does that. Pretty. We're gonna take a large bowl, we put our pears in there, we're gonna add our raisins of the sun, plus the couple cranberries that we snuck in there, our lemon juice, two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of flour, the cinnamon, and gently toss to combine. Smells good. Mm -hmm. And one dash of salt. Ah, oh, yeah. So now we're gonna set this aside. <laughs> Preheat the oven to 375. In a small saucepan, add one fourth of a cup of apple juice or pear nectar, three tablespoons of sugar, and two tablespoons of your finely minced crystallized ginger. And then you're gonna bring it to a boil over medium heat. When it begins to boil, you'll reduce it to a simmer and simmer uncovered for five minutes. So this is how precious ginger had become in the Middle Ages. 500 grams of ginger, which is roughly equivalent to like half a bag of sugar, cost as much as a live sheep. Add it to our fruit mixture and stir it together. Ooh. <laughs> Get all those good bits. Lightly flour your surface. The dough. And now you're gonna roll your disc out into a 13 inch circle. And then you'll just put your fruit into the center of your pie crust, leaving about two inches on the perimeter. Okay, so now we're just gonna fold the edges up and over, pleating as we go. I'm gonna paint a little bit of the uh, butter around the outside here onto the dough, and you're going to endure it with some sugar. Endure it with sugar. Endure it, endure it. You're going to cook for 45 to 60 minutes. While you're waiting for it to cook, we recommend you dance to the music of your youth. Ooh, look. Ho, oh, ho, ho. Mmm, that's really good. A little peppery from the ginger. Mm hmm That dusty, earthy flavor from the saffron. And the pear is very mellow, and the raisins are so sweet. Very subtle. You can actually taste the saffron in the crust, which is really amazing. Mm. Stay tuned for more episodes of Shakespeare's Test Kitchen. We might have some special guests. Yeah, stay tuned. The meat pies. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait. See you then. Bye-bye.